American Democracy The Funeral At the end of June 2011, I uploaded a video titled The Death of American Democracy. Here is a short excerpt. The collapses of the Twin Towers at the World Trade Center on September the 11th, 2001 were horrific events that few will ever forget. The lives of almost 3,000 people, including their would-be rescuers, crushed out in front of our eyes. They were certainly the most frightening images that I have ever seen, up until May 24, 2011, when Benjamin Netanyahu addressed a joint session of the United States Congress and received 29 standing ovations, along with many other outbursts of sycophantic applause. It was the final nail in a coffin, the construction of which began long ago, and in it all remaining vestiges of democracy were joyfully laid to rest by those sworn to protect it, as it became clear that the United States was now controlled by enemies inside its gates. Ruthless enemies who brook no deviation from the policies they dream up, and few members of the United States House of Representatives or the Senate are prepared to commit political suicide by standing up to them. Instead, as we can see, they are all standing up to applaud them. The spokesperson for these enemies of the people was the Prime Minister of a foreign power, Israel. A strange choice at first glance, but really a clever surrogate, because the United States Congress could hardly be seen voting against the best interests of its own citizens, but it could be seen voting for the interests of Israel. And once again, the interests of Israel took pride of place at the Democratic Convention being held in North Carolina, when the mayor of Los Angeles decided to take it upon his ears alone to judge whether or not the delegates agreed with instating or reinstating a contentious piece of party policy which accepted Jerusalem as being the capital of Israel. Never mind the repercussions that such a decision would have on a new administration's foreign policy, the further sidelining of the interests of the Palestinian people and those in the region who detest Israel's overbearing attitude towards them. Oh no, what Israel demanded of the Democrats, and what a laugh that name is, Israel got. Here's how. This guy decided to do a quick I, no vote based on the sound that the delegates made and this is the waveform of that sound. All those delegates in favor say aye. All those delegates opposed say no. In the opinion He was of the going to give it to the eyes right there and then, but changed his mind. Here's his second try. In favor say aye. All those delegates opposed say no. The nose certainly looked a bit louder to me, and probably sounded so to the Honourable Mr. Mayor, so he asked them to have yet another go. All those delegates in favour say aye. All those delegates opposed say no. In the opinion of the Chair, two-thirds have voted in the affirmative. The motion is adopted, and the platform has been amended as shown on the screen. This was an utter disgrace. I've seen and heard this man described as a prostitute, but that is too insulting. Insulting to prostitutes, that is, for prostitutes only put themselves at risk. People like this man and those who stand behind him and condone such base actions damage the very fabric of the society they use to further their own corrupt agendas. They are as disgusting as those who stood and cheered the Israeli Prime Minister when he addressed a joint session of Congress, as already seen at the beginning of this video. There is little else to be said, so here is the ending of that video, which should be a wake-up call to those who have the ears to listen and the guts to do something about it. To understand the consequences of this craven groveling, hearken not unto Netanyahu's words, rather look upon some of his nation's recent deeds and juxtapose them with the almost unanimous approval of the United States Congress. Zaitun, flattened by Israeli bulldozers. But in this house, they'd herded 100 members of the Samuni clan. And then they shelled it, killing 49 of them. Gaza, white phosphorus, dropped on a civilian population causing death, blindness and other horrendous injuries. 
May 2010, murder in the Mediterranean. The attack on the Freedom Flotilla attempting to break the illegal siege of Gaza. Out of a multitude of nationalities on board the Mavi Marmara, nine men, all Turkish, were gunned down in what must have been targeted assassinations. 19-year-old Furkan Dogan, an American citizen of Turkish descent, was shot once in the chest and four times in the head. It really doesn't matter who wins the upcoming presidential election. Either way, the American people and the rest of the world will lose.